first and foremost, man, congratulations. The message you sent me yesterday literally put one of the biggest smiles on my face that I've had in so long. You said that you're a full-time content creator now. Yeah, Flashy, that is right. Um, a very big, a very emotional step for me personally. Yeah, but it happened after one and a half years. I mean, about one and a half years. Listen, and, man, uh, one and a half years is like nothing compared to what some people do. So you you hit the fast track. You just figured it out and <laughs> ran with yeah. it and got it done in one and a half years. So what 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 changed? What was it that happened that got you to be able to do this full time now? Um, we had several changes, actually, and it was a very hard decision. It might be one of the hardest decisions I ever had to take in my entire life. Um, but the main reason is that I only had two options. And the first option is to basically scale it down and keep my old job because the current schedule, um, it is just too much to handle for me personally. So I was basically thinking about, do I keep my old job and scale everything down again and host events maybe one time a week, maybe two times? or do I attack <laughs> and <laughs> basically try to just grind and create something, a new experience for people, for players. And uh, yeah, I chose the second route. I love it, man. I absolutely love it. That's, and, you know, especially in someone in your position, like maybe if someone's like, whatever, 18, 19, that's a completely different theory. But for yeah. you, like house, wife, bills, you got shit to pay for, man. And to sit down and think like, do I take the chance on this? Or... You know, do I take the safe route? And I think a lot of people in your position are probably like, let me take the safe route, scale it down and see what happens. But you went on the full offense, man. And I love to hear <laughs> that is so badass that you did it. And we yeah, talked a little I, bit about it. You said it was because YouTube also had a big help with it too, right? I would love, I honestly, I want you on the show. I just want to talk about YouTube for like an hour. <laughs> I want to talk about <laughs> you and how you feel about YouTube because you are killing it on YouTube, man. I looked and yeah, like you, you upload like a few times, like six months ago, but it seems like you really ramped up your uploads over the past 30 days. And in that time, 2,000 subscribers and almost a quarter million views. You got to be doing something right over there. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. The thing is, Flashy, I want to be honest. I'm an old man. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I'm still, still at this point um, pretty new to content creation itself. Um, I started, like I said, like one and a, one and a half years ago. And I wasn't too familiar with, I mean, socials, Twitter, YouTube, Twitch. I just tried to, to figure that all out. But I want to be honest, at the same time, yes, YouTube was a game changer. Um, in terms of not only getting monetized on YouTube, but basically advertising on YouTube as well. And with advertising, getting more players into events and stuff like that. YouTube is, uh, yeah, I was very, very surprised. And I was like, when I saw it the first time, I was, yeah, I was like, why didn't I start earlier, right? That is always, the, <laughs> always you always hear time, that yep. probably, why didn't I start earlier? But yeah, YouTube is uh, playing a huge role in the decision making behind the scenes for me going full time, yeah. And what's crazy is we had you on a podcast. We talked like, I, don't, I should have checked how long ago that was, but we talked a little while back. Must have been like seven or eight months ago at this point. And I remember the whole time, all I was talking about to you was like, you ever thought about, you know, maybe uploading your tournaments or doing some YouTube stuff here and there? <laughs> and now here we are eight months later, man. And you're like, because of YouTube, that was one of the a big factor of me being able to go full time. And man, that just warms my heart, dude. I'm so happy that because like after that was done, I literally sat there. I was like, yo, did I just like berate Rip the entire time and just talk about YouTube when he has no care for it? But I'm so happy that eight months later or wherever we're at, you're like, nah, man, that was that's the move right there. Bless you. That was the best advice ever. And I have to thank you for that. Let's go, dude. <laughs> I'm so happy, man. I'm so happy it worked for somebody, dude. I'm so and of all people, you like I feel like you just have such a different approach like this whole content thing man it's never you it's always the players the commentators the people watching it's never you you are never the focal point granted your voice is gracing everybody <laughs> over over all these matches and stuff but it's never about you first and i think that is one of the most difficult things that i've ever seen somebody do in content because it really is it should be all about you 
But for you, man, you just went in and you're like, I, if anything, I just want to be a spectator, you know? Was that kind of like the beginning where you're like, I don't want it to be about me. I want it to be about these other people. Yes. Um, and that is the exact reason why I started streaming back then. Um, when I look back at the past, the, the main reason why I wanted to stream or why I started streaming is to showcase a certain underrepresented part of the community. And back in the days, in terms of uh, MK11, it was the PC community who didn't have a lot of events, basically no events going on. And that was my main community back then. I was a PC player and so I decided one day, you know what, let's just try to, to get a little bit of, of content going with the boys, maybe host a <laughs> tournament here and there with a few players. Um, we started back then doing like King of the Hills with five people. Five people. We had three viewers on Twitch back then. Jeez, man. And um, that's how we started. Yep. And I always wanted to showcase the PC players to the world because I was like, man, everyone is always show showcasing PS4. We have Xbox, but everyone is forgetting about PC. And I need to change that. That was the main reason. And uh, so I started going and it grew bigger from time to time. More players joined. And yeah, and now I'm sitting here having to do this full time because it got so big <laughs> and we have now so many competing players that it is yeah it is literally a full-time job now and i see when you uh you tweet a lot like your matchmaking and your brackets and stuff like that it literally looks like you're looking at a scene from the matrix man you just got names and yeah. numbers down a list going on seemingly forever and to know that you started with five people in a king of the hill and it's turned into this and now not only that you got like north america involved because you're doing a lot of the eu thing now north america is involved and you're doing this like cross-pollination of EU players playing against NA players almost for the first time outside of like major events if they match up like how did you how are you the first person to be like NA can play against EU were you just playing against someone in NA and the connection was fine it is we have I gotta say Flashy we have a slightly different approach and that is due to basically my main motivation doing this um our or my focus is not the pro level scene. Let's say it like that. My main goal, and I think what MK11 needs in general, we right now, we need a community, right? We need as many players as we can get. And I try to basically combine the whole world. If it's playable, then they can play. And I think that is a big, big reason why we are able to do this because so many players from all across the world just to give you some numbers on a daily basis we stream five days uh, five days a week and on every single day we have 200 signups for each day and that is the, basically we did some analytics today and in week one alone this season that means in the very first week that is five days we had 700 first two threes played in a throughout week. the entire community in, in one week. week. Yes, 700 matches played on PS4 and on PC. And the main reason behind it and why we are doing all this is, of course, we all know MK11 is a little bit of an older game now. Players Which is weird to think new about. Games yeah, than, yeah, it is. It's weird. It is weird, but. That's exactly the point. The community got a little bit smaller and we tried to prevent the game from dying by allowing more regions. Hmm. And the key success here is that we focus very, very heavily on the casual scene on top of that. That, that means we try to encourage people. Even if you just bought the game yesterday, we say that every single day. We try to bring everyone into these events because that's the beauty of the FGC, right? Getting your first experience in competitive fighting games. And uh, yeah, that's what we try. And we actually had a huge, huge uh, success with it, yeah. How, how do you manage 700 matches played in a week? Like, I, there's it no other the question part. for me to ask. Like, how do, you even, how do you even manage that? How do you manage, how do you track it? How do you keep all the numbers, like, set? How is there no bullshit where people are like, I won, no, I won? Like... How do you manage all of that? Yeah, that <laughs> exactly. Is a very yeah, right? good question, Flashy. <laughs> that is a very good question. And I got to say, even though um, a lot of people think that I go 
full time because of the stream schedule. But that is not the point. The stream streaming is the easiest thing, as yeah. you can imagine. The um, work behind the scenes is what, yeah, had had I had to go full time because of that, because we stream from two hours, two to three hours mm -hmm. each day, and that is super super easy. But as you can imagine, all the work before that, getting in contact with the players, managing 200 plus signups, generate the matches. We have a very specific matchmaking system to make it even more easier for the players. That means we have different time spots hmm. where players can sign up because um, I don't like that people have to sit there for three hours and wait for the match. Absolutely. So the perfect scenario for us is someone is like, okay, I want to play some MK11 tonight but I don't have a lot of time. The wife is waiting or whatever. So I want to sign up. I just want to play a single first to three in the first hour from between, I don't know, one Eastern and two Eastern. That's where I have time. And we want to make this happen. When a player decides, you know, I want to compete tonight, we want to encourage him to sign up and then guarantee that he gets a match in that exact time frame. And that is the, yeah, that is the hardest work because you can imagine you not only have 200 players, but you have 200 players who everyone and every one of them chose a different uh, sign up spot or a time spot. And yeah, the matchmaking alone to, to give you some numbers, because I know you're curious, um, it takes around two to two and a half hours each day just to schedule the matches um, alone. That means the, the majority the biggest part is just doing work behind the scenes. And of course, after the stream, putting all the scores in, right? And I was going to say, the what's, what's the after the stream now? Yep, it's doing the rankings and getting yeah. all the scores. So you were working a full-time job, coming home, getting all the matchmaking done, getting the numbers ready, getting the matches set up, doing the live stream, ending your live stream, doing the numbers, getting all the ranks in, getting all the wins and stuff. Bro, by this point, it's got to be like, well, and then we'll get to the YouTube part. But at this point, it's already got, before YouTube, it's already got to be like 11 p.m., man. Like what? Uh, how, oh, way, la way later. How than, are you like, managing, <laughs> when you had that full-time job, before you went full-time here, how the hell were you managing all that and not going insane? I, I don't want to say, uh, I... You went a little insane. I didn't sleep. Yeah, <laughs> I went a little insane. I, I didn't sleep much. And uh, yeah, as we said in the beginning, that is the main reason why I had to choose because for, for a single person like me, it is just not manageable yeah. anymore with another job beside that. We are talking about a workload each day from around eight to 10 hours overall, if you inc include everything. And that is just not, not possible. If you are working another job, and so I had to make the decision. Do I scale it down or do I reach for the stars, right? And really try to make this work and put even more effort in it. And I think it's the right step, Flashy. I'm, I'm very, very excited. Of course, I'm very scared at the same time because, yeah, I, I'm, I'm all, I have a wife, as yep. you said, and bills to pay. Yep. But I'm very, very confident in the community and... I hope that it works in the end and that is <laughs> that it's of course the right decision. I think with how much care you have about this project that you're doing, I think it has to work. Like there's no way that it can't work. And I think it's already working. You know what I'm saying? So it only can get bigger the more work you put in. How do you feel now? You kind of feel like a weight. I mean, you said you're scared, but at the same time, do you feel like more energized and more excited because you know you can just sit down and dive headfirst into the daily workload yes. that is this? 100% flashy. I got to say um it is a very strange feeling to to wake up in the morning and you you're sitting there like you know what I can do whatever I want basically yep. right because <laughs> yeah. um, I'm basically I'm my own boss now for mm -hmm. the for the first time but it gives you so much freedom and it, it is a great thing and I got to say I work even more now yep I was <laughs> just about the, to say I bet is, you're working more the, hours <laughs> That is the super strange thing because it's it's like your own baby right yep. there. And you sit there, you wake up in the morning and you're like, no, man, I want to improve here. I want to improve there. And now that is literally my main focus and it's my main job at the same time. So, of course, I try to make the best out of it and put mm -hmm. as much effort into this as possible. I, I love to hear that. Yeah, that, that same thing happened with me, right? So I became my own boss doing all this thing. And I was like, I became my own boss so like I could pick when I wanted to work. 
I'm waking up way earlier. I'm doing way more shit. I'm not going to sleep till way later. I was like, wh what did I sign up for here, man? Because this is not what I thought it was. But like you said, it's like your baby. And like the second you open your eyes and right before you go to sleep, it's all that you're thinking about. How can you make it better? How can you grow it? How can you make more money from it? And all that. And it's, it's scary, but damn, if it isn't exciting every day, man. It is maybe even the most exciting thing I've ever done in my life. Um, Your wife's going to hear that and be like, what the hell, man? What the, what the hell? Uh, don't, don't get me started. Uh, a lot of sleepless nights, but I'm very happy to say that my wife encouraged me as well because she literally sees how happy I am doing this. It's a big, big passion for me. I'm super grateful that I even get the opportunity to do this um, with a very, very, very great community behind me. And giving me so much momentum that I actually made the decision now to, you know what, let's try this shit. It's time. Reach for the stars, man. You got, and that support Sorry. system is so important, right? Having that support behind you, whether it's like family or like the people you meet in the space, your network, having that support to just keep pushing you forward is absolutely yes. crucial. Uh, I want to talk about the YouTube thing now because we talked about how you didn't go to sleep before YouTube. Now you got a YouTube channel. I actually saw, I want to commend you. Bro, two days ago, you uploaded four videos in a day. <laughs> on that damn channel like bro <laughs> what four videos yeah, in a day you are hustling <laughs> you are hustling i love it are yeah. you are you making those thumbnails and everything and cutting the videos everything yourself or do you have someone yeah. to do that no 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 i do uh, right now i do everything myself i have a friend right now who uh, actually started doing some cut work in the background um a few days ago but I, for, for YouTube itself, um, the majority of time, yeah, I did it myself. I did the thumbnail. I, ha I have two friends. One is a graphic designer mm. who uh, shoots me basically thumbnail presets from time to time. A super cool dude. And uh, yeah, we are just trying to get started. But of course, you can imagine starting a YouTube and then you have to figure everything out. How do I actually title a yep. video, right? Oh. How do I design a thumbnail? But it is a progress, which is a lot of fun. Learning this is really one of the most fun things I've ever done. And it's, it's just a grind. And then seeing the numbers go up is a very, very big reward. Yeah, yeah, it feels so good. And honestly, that's one of the most fun things about YouTube because it's never quite figured out, right? There's always something better for your thumbnails. There's always a better title. And just sitting there and really trying to just figure out how to do that is one of my favorite parts. I go insane. Like, I feel like my hair falls out sometimes trying to come up with a title or a thumbnail. But man, when you get the one and you're just like, dude, that looks so good. Or like, that title is so good. It is literally like the best feeling of all time. And then yeah. you said you get the numbers, you get that instant gratification, right? But there's a flip side of that too. Like, let's say you, you think you got a great title and thumbnail and the video bombs right nobody sees oh, it yeah. nobody watches it you got to be careful with that too because you can go really high or you could get like really low and have it ruin your day but i think dude the momentum that you're riding man don't even worry about that shit just keep getting better did you have any photoshop like expertise or any photoshop work at all before this or you kind of oh, just man, fleshy. loaded up photoshop you're and you're like here we go fleshy you're gonna laugh now because <laughs> when my friend sent me the um, preset for the thumbnail the first question I asked is, um, how do I edit that in paint? <laughs> and then he's like, wait, you don't have Photoshop? Uh, and I was like, no, of course I don't have Photoshop. But do I need it? And Flashy, believe it or not, I do the thumbnail in an online Photoshop editor. So I can basically, there is a homepage where you can edit Photoshop files for free. And that's how I do my thumbnails right now because I still have no access to freaking Photoshop. Oh my God. I don't know what's worse, that or Microsoft Paint. I, honestly, uh, I think I prefer you doing it in I'm, Paint at this I'm point. Learning. <laughs> Listen, you're, like I said, you're. I mean, it's crazy that you're only a month in technically on YouTube. And the fact that you've hit the ground running, man, I mean, that's that's got to prove something. And I think the thumbnails look great, dude. I think you're killing it with the <laughs> thumbnails, man. Like I was, I was looking over them. And I was like, he's got to be doing these on his own. And I love, you're at a great starting point. Back when I started, dude, I wasn't even making thumbnails. I was finding pictures on Google and just slapping them in there. Like I, I oh, yeah. was like terrified of Photoshop, but that's another fun thing, man. Sitting down like late night, everybody's sleeping, lights off, just YouTube, uh, like YouTube tutorial on one monitor and your Photoshop open on the other monitor and you just get to it, man. It's, it's therapeutic. Yeah, and it is super rewarding at the same time because um, especially with content creation, that's the beauty about it. There's like 
as you can say, you can always improve. You can always make things better. And the the progress is maybe even the most fun thing about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when you see yourself right. getting better, that's what it's all about. Yeah, when you when you just see, you know, and even all these small steps, as you said, for example, just I just learned how to put a frame around a thumbnail. All these, uh, <laughs> and then when you upload it for the first time, and you know. I did. You're like, yo, I'm sick. I did it with a YouTube tutorial, but I did it. I'm sick, (laughs) man. I know. Yeah, I know exactly how it feels, and I I love it, man. And I love that on your YouTube channel too. It seems like you're doing like just the straight ripped stream. Just take the stream and put it up there. But you're also taking the individual matches and uploading them. It's a it's a great strategy for anybody that's doing that. I mean, that's exactly what I did with Coliseum, right? You get the full thing, and then you take your matches, and you can and those individual matches. That's where you can practice, like titling making different thumbnails trying different things you know so you use those as like your practice area and you got your full long form vods that people will sit down and watch and mm-hmm. man it's uh definitely a no-brainer to do what you're doing and i love it but my question is a lot of this has been spent talking about like rip's arena right but not rip has do you think you'll ever just be like a content creator where you're the focus right where you're sitting down streaming a game it's just you it's not a tournament you know what i'm saying have you ever thought about anything like that or will it always be rips arena players commentators tournaments what is like the next evolution of content creator rip that's that's a very good question a lot of people ask that already back in the days and i gotta say my my main focus is gonna be the experience with my co-commentator with players i I always try to to showcase people. I think that's that's my main thing. And this is not going to change. I don't think the format itself is going to change ever. But, of course, as we said, we reach for the stars, right? We would love to implement other games on top of that, under the Rips Arena roof. Mm-hmm. I mean, there are so many promising titles on the horizon. Street Fighter, uh, Tekken, next NRS game, maybe, and stuff like if that. If it even uh, exists. So- if it, yeah, if it ever that comes is another out good this point. point. <laughs> but of course, the the dream, the absolute dream, would be to have several games under under one stream, and then host tournaments, build communities around that, and then showcase that on YouTube in the end. Um, well, it's, it's always going to be the arena, huh? It is always going to be the arena, most likely. Yeah, but it is. It is just very, I mean, I don't have to tell you, it is just very time consuming, right? A lot of people asked us already if we are, if we want to add Tekken, for example, yep. right now, Tekken 7 or Street Fighter. But as for now, it is just impossible because I, even doing this full, uh, full time, I don't have enough time. <laughs> I, need a, I need a 48 hour day for that. I know, man. I, I wish we had those. I like, I always have a sheet of questions over for my guests. And one of them is literally, will you be implementing or plans to implement any other games under that. And if anything, I'd like to take that a step further. Would you ever do any non-fighting game titles? Because I remember when we first did a podcast, you were a big Counter-Strike guy back in the day, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember this. Don't yeah. worry. And yeah, yeah. so any any time that you would think about incorporating like FPS games, I mean, BRs are huge right now, anything like that? Or are you just like, you know what? I like my fighting games. I like how the format is now. I don't really want to get too crazy. I cannot even really answer that question. That is the the cool thing because, as you mentioned, back in the days, I never had any experience with fighting games Mm. at all. Nothing. I only played shooters, Call of Duty and Counter-Strike. That was my jam. With the boys, you know, in the evening, matchmaking with the squad. Oh, yeah. And then one day, I just tried or my mate sent me a message saying, you know what, let's, uh, Mortal Kombat 11 is on sale. Let's buy it and let's press some buttons. And... That's where it all started. And right now it completely changed. Um, so I don't even, I cannot even remember when I played a shooter the last time. Since I started streaming or since I started playing fighting games, I didn't touch any other game wow. at all. I, I didn't even start anything. So, and I, I don't even want it to be honest because. <laughs> For me personally, and maybe it is even because it's my first fighting game that I still have so much fun with MK11. Yeah. I, the worst thing is I don't have any time to play it myself anymore. <laughs> that, is the, that is the bad thing. But I still enjoy it so much, even doing this five times. It never gets boring. I love to see high-level players. I love to, At the same time, I love to see new players 
trying it out for the first time and seeing their journey as a player leveling up, learning new little little tricks, which seems super boring to some people when they're like, yeah, but, but everyone does that. But if you think about it, that there is someone out there who tries to play this game competitively because of you or because of your events, and he sends you a message before he signed up and saying, man, he is, I'm so nervous, but I'm so excited to play for the first time. And then they play on stream, and um, the first message, the first message, Flashy, I always get, and it doesn't even matter if they lose 3-0. They were like, that was the best decision ever. I had so much fun, even though I lost on stream, but the experience, the commentary, just the feeling to be a part of the community and enjoying a hobby together, that's what it's all about. And that's what the FGC needs, in my opinion. And that's why we do this. I am fired up right now, man. God damn, dude, that is like, <laughs> that is the best thing I've ever heard. And again, it is not about you. That's what blows my mind this whole time. It is not about you. And I wanted to, I, that like, weirdly enough, that can lead me into a question because you have probably like one of the most wholesome communities out there. And 100%. I, I think a lot of people would say that, I mean, who cares what people say, but people tend to say like the FGC is like, they'll throw the word toxic around, salty, whatever they want to say. How do you think that you've cultivated a community of people that just come together and have fun. Like, again, even if someone gets torched 3-0, I've, I've been a witness to tournaments where they'll just start talking shit to the other person. But with you, I, it's always, anytime I'm watching, it's always GG's in the chat. Everyone's always having a good time. Everyone's always laughing. You're cracking jokes. People are cracking jokes at you. It's like, how do you think you've managed to just cultivate that community of just like fun, happiness, laughter over this past year and a half? Yeah, um, I think it literally comes down to the design of these events themselves because, um, as you know, we, we really don't run tournaments and we don't run tournaments for a specific reason because we always said um, we don't only want to showcase the highest possible level and we wanted to give everyone a chance to be on stream. It doesn't matter how good they are, how bad they are. And I think during the last year, so many people realized that it's not always about, of course, winning is a big part of the FGC, but I think just having the, the skill mix in these events where you have absolute beginners, you have pro players like Arn Kratos competing at the same time in the same game. Someone picked up the game in round one and then the next round you see Arn Kratos fighting an EVO level champ, right? And I think the mix and the overall vibe in this stream, we're just sitting there having a good time with the community. Um, we are very, very community focused. That means sometimes we don't even commentate the match. We just <laughs> sit there <laughs> laughing our asses off, right? <laughs> Talking with the chat, but that is just how we are. And um, that's just what happened. Or yeah, that's just what this turned all into a very community-focused event, and the community is our biggest strength. And able, that's the reason why we're able to do this, only because of the community. Because price money is a big, big point as well. And doing this is great, but to really get something competitive going and being able to combine both communities, the casuals and the pro scene, is only possible because of the support of the community. And I com can completely understand that, that pro players are saying, I put so much time into leveling up to get to this point that they want to get rewarded for it. And we are in a very, very, very lucky position that we have so much community support that we are able to not only put up a very, very decent prize pool at the end of the season, but with that community allowing everyone to join these events as well, uh, yeah, because I'm now doing this full time and can literally schedule sets for four hours a day, right? And it doesn't matter how many signups um, we have. We are just, we just found, yeah, we just found the trick here, I think. And that's all thanks to the community in the end. It's always about the community with you, man. It's, it's unbelievable to hear that. Do you, when you're making these like matchmaking and these brackets, right? Are you specifically putting like, a more casual player with a more casual player? Is it just luck of the draw? Like, pick out of the hat whoever's in a time? How do you kind of 
what is i guess my question is like what is the matchmaking process you talked a lot about how it takes so much time what are you actually like doing during that time yes um that's a fun story because um a running joke in these events is that everyone in the community or everyone in the discord they call me rigged arena because they still <laughs> think that the matchmaking itself is somewhere, but it is not so we have a certain system and as mentioned earlier we have the time spots right yeah so what i do is um i go through the sign up channels we have sign up channels for every single day where the oh, basically that's another good point um to talk about real quick if you want to sign up in our events, we have no complicated process at all. You literally only have to put your PSN in the Discord channel and you're done. No sign up on home, nothing. Just put your PSN in the channel and you will get a match that day. So we try to make it as easy for the players as possible. And then what happens is, of course, I start to separate the signups. We have a PS4 league on the one side and we have a PC league. And unfortunately, PC and PS4 cannot play together. The no. crossplay doesn't work. Um, so we had to host two different leagues. And within these leagues, we have another separation by time. Players who can only play early. We have players who can only play late. And we have players who can play on any spot. So they're like, they can sign up and say, you know what? It doesn't matter. I'm available all the time. And then I, after doing this separation, I basically just generate the matches with a randomizer. Really? And back in the days, yes, just with a randomizer. So sometimes we had that so many, we had that last week even, um, that a beginner who literally just started playing the game a week ago had to fight the three-time arena champion. <laughs> and it was never, but fleshy. It was one of the funniest and one of the greatest matches I've ever seen. Everyone had a blast. Of course, when we posted the lineup, everyone was like, Oh, did that just happen? <laughs> and I'm like, but I think that is another thing where just have a love and have time and enjoy playing uh, fighting games. That's I, what it's all about. I think that gets lost, man. I, I love that you kind of bring that to the forefront of what you're doing here is because I think a lot of people just think about winning and then teabagging their opponent because they beat them with like 10% yeah. health left, right? You've kind of found a and way to like just have fun in a competitive setting, which I think yeah. does not exist. Yeah, that is, that is a very good point. And I got to say um, that comments like that or behaving like that makes me a little bit sad sometimes because you know it as well. I mean, you're a part of the FGC as well. Everyone in the FGC wants to have bigger events. We want more sponsorships. We want more money. But how do we actually do that, Flashy, right? And I am convinced and I'm 100% sure that our long-term goal has to be the casual scene. We need to encourage more people to try and test fighting games and just have fun with it. And by always focusing on the pro side of things in tournaments and only showcasing the highest possible level, you cut out 80% of the community who are not even able to ever play on some kind of stream. And that always made me a little bit sad because there are so many people out there always watching these events. They are donating to the prize pool. They are basically a part, but at the same time, they are not because they are never allowed to just play the game on stream themselves, right? Because everyone is always focusing. We need the highest level. And people completely forget that most of the esports title are successful because the casual community is so big, right? And the entry level is so low. For example, if you want to start playing Counter-Strike, perfect example, Counter-Strike is a game you can, you can learn it. Very, you can start immediately, right? Mm -hmm. you, you, you play it for one hour and you know what's going on. With fighting games, it's a little bit different, right? The execution is way, way more difficult. And um, we should just ma make it as easy to get into these games as possible and at the same time being as rewarding as possible. That means we as a commentator, we need to hype people up. We need to point out, man, we want you in there. If you're watching this for the first time and you want to compete, get in here, sign up, have a good time. It doesn't matter if you win. It doesn't matter if you lose. Just have a good time. And, and I, uh, sorry to cut you off, but yeah, I think you're doing a lot of, a lot of stuff like that. It's a lot of little things that you're doing to like kind of bring that point home. And one thing that what that you said was like 
all you have to do to sign up is just put your PSN in the Discord. Like, that alone, I think, is a game changer because, dude, even for me, if I want to compete, I got to go to, what is it, start.gg. I got to find a bracket. I got to get in the bracket. I got to find my opponent. I got to invite them. I got to report the score. Even me, I'm like, I don't want to. How the hell is someone that just got the game on sale and maybe watch a tournament online or something. It's like, hey, I want to try that. Okay, well, you got to make a start.gg account. And you got to go to your opponent. Then you got to get in the bracket. Then you, It's like, nobody's going to do that, man. Nobody. That's Only the like point. the hardcore players. And I love that you're doing a little thing where it's like, hey, you join our Discord. You put your PSN in your time. Done. Like, you're, yeah. we got you covered. I think stuff like that is crucial. And I will, I got I to gotta make sure after this, send me your Discord. So I can put it in the description. If anybody wants to sign up for Rips Arena. Of course, you got to do it. At this point, it's too damn easy to not sign up. It's harder <laughs> to not sign up than it is to sign up for Rips Tournaments, man. Jeez, dude. I love everything that you're doing. It's, it's, I, I think I used the word heartwarming at the beginning of this, but God damn, it is so heartwarming to hear this because none of this is about you. And I don't know how many times I'm going to say that. I'm trying to make it about you, but you won't let me make it about you. <laughs> you're just like, it's all about the community, man. God, it's unbelievable. It, it's really one of the most rare things that I've seen in my five years of doing content creation, man. Yeah, it is. I think everyone is just playing a very big role to make this as unique and as special as it is. There's just so much support. There's so, so many players. We have so many commentators. I mean, I mean, you can imagine, I need a co-commentator five times a week. And we have so many people out there um, who are like, man, I want to commentate here. I want, we basically are booked out for four weeks in advance until you can, uh, because there are so many people who want to help out. We have an insane mod team on top of that, who is doing God's work behind the scenes, Flashy. Um, because you can imagine when we are live, that is basically the time window for the matchmaking itself. We only have seven spots a day where we showcase live fights. That means we have seven fights. That's around two to three hours. And you can imagine 200 signups each day. 90% of the fights are off stream. And when you have so many new players uh, competing, sometimes they're, they, they don't know what to do. Am I allowed to change character, for example? And the mod team we have behind the scenes is mind-blowing. They... They tag a mod in the Discord, and I swear to God, Flashy, it takes one second, and they have an answer. And um, just seeing that when I turn off my stream, right, and I shut it down, and I go to the Discord, and I see how much work the mod team in the background is doing, and how many people are helping to make this uh, what it is today, it is, yeah, it is warming my heart, and that's, no, it is not me, it is really a community thing. Absolutely. And that, it seems like with the, like the mods and stuff, is this all just people from the community? You're like, hey, you want to take the extra step and help us out in the Discord and stuff? Yes. Yes. <laughs> that's just people who try to help. That's, that's all. And people um, who are really trying to get something started or trying to make the FGC a little bit better, I guess. I think we can say it like that. And uh, yeah, it is just all the community from the community. For the community. The community is the, the main part why we are even able to do this. The mm -hmm. community is doing everything. Mod work, prize pool, players. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> the, that's the, the it whole is. thing. That is, that is the secret, yeah. 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 And you were doing, uh, so you said that there's like some nice prize pool stuff. You do completely crowdfunded prize pools for all your seasons? Yes. Um, you have, were, I mean, you have the I number. Have number for you. What is the number on total raised in the year and a half that you started? No, 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 it's not even because um, right now we are only talking about the Rips Arena League, right? We Because back in the days, Flashy, we had no prize pool at all. Mm. Um, we just did that for fun as an exhibition. We are currently in season nine, so I would say it's around uh, 11 months. Yeah, 11 months, or let's say a year. Okay. And we did some math back then. So within the last year, we crowdfunded. And um, the actual number is higher because of taxes, you know that. Yes. But the payout for the players in one year is uh, $35,000. Yeah, and that is pretty, pretty big. Yeah, we are averaging a price pool of like $3,000 a 
every season. That means every six weeks. Holy shit. <laughs> like, yeah. That is insane, it is, it is man. Yeah. The, I still cannot believe it as well, especially for a fighting game, because we are literally pumping out um, evil numbers every six weeks. More, <laughs> right? more than that, yeah, man. That, I'm, I'm pretty sure that... Um, yeah, that we actually have the, the highest prize pools in MK11 currently. And Bro. that is without any sponsoring at all. Nothing. It is all community. Everything. 100%. Holy shit, dude. I didn't know it was like that. <laughs> I knew yeah. you guys were doing some like serious numbers for the players, but... Because you were doing like... Were you doing like subscribers? Gets a cut. Like a cut goes into the prize pool. Donations, bits. All, like it all gets a cut and goes to the prize pool. That is a very good point, Flashy. And um, back then, when I started doing this, um, I not a lot of people know that, but I didn't took any money for myself back then. I really started doing this as a hobby back then. And I always wanted to say, I want to support the MK11 community. And that means everyone back in the days knew that everything is for the players. Not only the donations, add money, subscriptions. I... I literally back then did that for free until like um, one and a half months ago. One and a half months ago. And that is, an, yeah, <laughs> that is. So I basically, <laughs> the, the reason why I want to talk about, because that is the perfect time, because we mentioned now that I went full time. And the reason why I was able to um, do that is, of course, because I had another job back then, which paid my bills. Yeah. And that changed now. But luckily enough, we have YouTube now, right? Yes, and so I am just able, um, right now we handle it like that. I try to take as less as possible for me from the stream itself. I try to cover my personal costs with the YouTube channel and a cut of the subscriptions. Mm -hmm. But we always said, and we really want to stick that, as always, all donations we get on stream, and that is the biggest part of the monetary Income we get for the players, it is uh, via donations, um, goes 100% to the players. And that I'm pretty sure it will stay like that. And I will just try to take a cut from the subscriptions like basically all other content creators do, right? People yeah. who subscribe or people who um, do the membership thing on YouTube mm -hmm. and stuff like that and try to make it work that way. But yeah, back in the days, um, since or till season eight, um, we did that for free. Yeah, we gave 100% um, to the community. Like and that I... is, of course, another reason why the price pools are so big. Because everything went to the players directly, 100%. Dude, you... It's really hard for me to, like, not know what to say. That, I, like, <laughs> at the beginning, okay, but, like, only up until, like, two months ago? Bro, what the hell, man? That, you are an anomaly. <laughs> like it, it, it doesn't make that. sense, bro. It just does. Like something just does not make sense. That is, that is probably one of the most selfless things I've ever heard. Holy crap! And the fact that you were doing, you were not taking a dollar, while you went to work in the morning for eight hours, came home, did that shit, didn't take a dollar, going to sleep at one o'clock in the morning, waking up at six, not even taking a dollar for yourself. Yeah, but. At the same time, Flashy, even though it might sound like it's just me being old, but <laughs> sometimes that is the key to success, maybe, right? And I wish, I don't want to say more people in the FGC would basically see the, the whole thing, right? The, the long term There's a big goal. picture, yeah. It's not just the, the that is, check that you're getting that at the end the of the key. month. Yep. And I always, I always thought it like that. MK11, that is my main game. It is struggling. I see it is struggling. So what can I do to make this work? Or what can I do to improve the overall scene? And back then, when we started Flash here, we started with 10 viewers. We started tournaments. Everyone was saying, the game is dead. The game, this doesn't work at all. This you have no prize pool. No one is going to join your events. And there, you have 100 persons out there who tell you every single day it doesn't work. Yep. Until you do it. And then it completely changes all of a sudden. And I still believe in this community. And at this point, I can say that I was right.
Because if you handle things the right way and you really encourage people and to try to build something together with other people, you can make everything work. It doesn't matter if the game is not supported anymore. If you have passion for it, do it, try it, and you will see most of the time it is going to work out in the end. You just have to put a little, a little effort. Yeah, yeah. Into you just got to go a little insane, a, lose a little sleep. Of course, but <laughs> yeah, but Flashy, that is of course a very good point um, because I was fortunate enough that mm. I had a job to yep. pay my bills, and then I just made the decision to to do it that way and give everything to the community, and then see what we can really achieve coming into this. Um, yeah, because we. As you know, we came all of a sudden, right? <laughs> and I just, one day I just started streaming. I had no PlayStation back then. That means I didn't even know anyone in the PS4 community. I didn't even know who Aquaman was uh, <laughs> one and a half years ago because I only knew my PC community. Yeah. I wasn't really following events. And that is just what happened then over time that we just grew and expanded. And uh, it is a beautiful thing. And it is a very, very beautiful journey at the same time. Uh, that is... You, sh- you gotta like write a book or something, man. And you need to write a book, and then you need to do the audio recording for it for the book. You need to, that's what you gotta do when you make it into an audio book. But one thing I want to talk about too, uh, we kind of got derailed in a very good way. But I want to talk about the whole like co-commentator aspect of everything you do because yeah, five days a week, you got someone right there next to you that's getting a lot of practice, a lot of exposure. And did you kind of know going into it like I want to get someone new? I know obviously you have like your regulars. But do you always try to, like, get someone new? Do you try to make sure they have a little bit of commentary experience? Like, what, what's kind of your method with getting a co-commentator for an event or for the week? Yeah. Um, you don't need experience at all. We are just happy to have you. If you, just, if you want to commentate, it doesn't matter. If you have never commentated in your life, try it anyway. It's the same as we say to the players. Yep. Um, because that is another way to grow a community flashy right and to give other people um a little showcase so what we actually try to do is we have specific scenes and when you follow our streams or you watch our streams you will realize that we always try to showcase something that means we always have a separate scene we show like 50 times during the stream where we showcase the co-commentator itself all the socials we have always a chat command um, in, the, in the Discord bot and in the chat bot on Twitch running, which constantly shout out all the socials from the co-commentator because, um, yeah, it's the same as with the players that we try to just encourage people to stream, to do content, to support the game, to host events. And we are fortunate enough right now that our audience is so big that we can actually have a little influence on their life as a content creator. We have some people who hopped on the stream for the first time and um, back in the day, no one knew them. And now they're like super, super successful and they have a lot of viewers, they get a lot of follows and they get the recognition they deserve. And I'm super happy that I can say that we did our whole thing, right? And promoted them and gave them a little bit of a showcase. And at the same time, of course, we are super grateful to have them and that people are willing to spend their time with us on the mic, hosting this show. Um, it is a beautiful thing. And, and then, we try to just give as much back as possible. That's, that's literally been like the moral of your journey since the very beginning, just trying to give back to everybody else. Do they, is it literally just, are you reaching out to commentators? Are people reaching out to you? You said you're booked like a month in advance. Do you just be like, hey, can you work on this day? Is it just like you just kind of free flow it and just try to get people booked? Yeah, most of the time we actually get messages mm-hmm. from people who are saying, you know what, I want to commentate. Um, do you have a spot here, a spot there? Of course, we have a certain lineup of regular commentators. Yeah. For example, we have the same commentator every Monday. We have certain people who are really, really, really frequently on the show. But at the same time, all these regular co-commentators, when someone else wants to sign up and he's like, man, I would love to commentate, then all the regular co-commentators say, get him in, get him in. I love it, You know? I love it. And um, so we are just trying to... Variety is another big, big thing in these shows. That's why it's... And with every co-commentator, it's different, right? The show feels different. Mm -hmm. It has a different vibe. And uh, that is the beauty about it. It's different every single day, even though we 
basically do the same thing five <laughs> times a week. All these different co-commentators and all these different players, yep. all these different skill levels. I think that's what's uh, a big part of the success behind the scenes. There's, you got a lot of factors in why you're successful, Rip. That's definitely one of them. And, you know, because I have so many more questions that I want to ask because this is, <laughs> this is just so insane to hear all of this. You've, you've kind of been like uh, warming up your chops in the whole commentary world. Do you think that you would want to maybe commentate like a, a non-Rips Arena event in terms of like a major, like getting flown out and commentating like an Evo or something like that? Because at this point, man, you said you do it, you've done nine seasons. You're doing five days a week. You're calling your season six weeks. So is that 30 times nine? Like 270 shows that you've done commentated. It's a pretty lethal resume right there for commentary reels. Do you think that you want to kind of take your skills to a LAN or like an offline event? Or are you kind of just like, I like doing my Rips Arena thing? I got to say, Flashy, I'm, I'm scared. Um, <laughs> oh, come on, man. Really, no, are I, you kidding really me? Am. No, I really am. And a lot of people who know me personally know that I still don't think that I am a commentator. I'm more like, it is hard to describe. You think I, you're a host instead of a commentator? Yes. Okay. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm a host. I, I commentate because, can I say because I have to? You, you know what I mean? <laughs> After everything it, you've course, said, you're allowed to say that, man. I promise. I mean, of course, it is my show in the end of the day. It yeah. is my event. I'm the one who presses the live button on the OBS. So, of course, I have to be there in every show. But at the same time, I'm super happy, Flashy, that I don't have to host this on my own. Because um, I just don't think that I am a real commentator i can host i can do i can manage stuff pretty good in the background that means i i love to work a lot and, but i'm not a commentator and there are so many people out there who are way better and uh yeah that is basically my point here i i don't think i would ever oh no flashy don't even i don't even want to think about me sitting there on like a big desk top eight you know? live would you do it or would you respectfully decline I would do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, this freaking guy! Man. <laughs> He's like, Flashy, yeah, no, I do reach that shit. for the stars. <laughs> exactly, exactly, man. Say yes to all the opportunities. Now that you're a full-time commentator, say yes to the opportunities, mm. my man. And I think you would kill it in that, man. Make have someone make you a reel, you know, so you don't have to do that shit, and just send it out. And bro, get that get that top eight spot because you've been killing it. But oh man, but <laughs> but another very very quick point, and I just remembered that. You asked me the same question back then because I mentioned a year ago I, I started streaming in German, right? Because my, my English was so bad. So oh, my, shit. my first weeks. And I was always afraid to yeah, speak English because my school English is... Mm. And um, yeah, so I just give it a shot. My English is still not the best, but it got way better. Than, if you watch my streams from like, or high, certain highlight clips, me saying, I, I still know it today because back in the day, I think it was a community member. His name was Diddle. And he asked me, when is your, when is your birthday? And I said, my birthday is in August. And he started, he was <laughs> cracking up. And the dude said, August. And I was like, but speaking about your question now, back in the day, I was like, I will never talk English on stream. Wow. And now I'm talking English on stream every day. And now when you ask the question, would you commentate like a big event? Probably I say no now, but then in, when it's time, I would probably say yeah. yes and just say, you know what, let's give it a shot. Let's try it. Dude, I like talking to you over the past like hour or whatever. I'm not going to lie. I completely forgot that English is not your first language and you're from Germany <laughs> and you speak German. Bro, I'm not even kidding. Like we were just having this conversation. I would have thought oh, that you're just you so a normal much. dude living in like whatever, Texas or something. <laughs> but yeah, you live in Germany and your first language is German. Dude, your English is... Yeah. I don't ever want to hear you say that your English is not good again. Your English is better than mine. I've lived here for 26 years, bro. Okay. Oh, I don't want to hear it. this shit. But uh, I, got, I got two questions for you because I could sit, dude. We, I, I already know I need to get you back on the show like next week. Like talking it's to you, always man, the same fleshy. is the best. But I got two questions for you. Where did the name Rip with the one come from? Oh, no, fleshy. Why are you? Wait, wait is, there, is there a story? I, gotta, I ask everybody. Is there a story here? 
Oh no! Listen, I man, it's my old. Hold up, hold up. You are. Gonna <laughs> I gotta hear shit. You are not ready for this. All right, lay it on me. So the name Rips is coming from my old Call of Duty One nickname I made when I was twelve, twelve <laughs> years old, and what I did back then. I wanted to take the name Soul Reaper. Soul Reaper. But me being 12, I didn't know that there is a difference between Soul Reaper and Soul Ripper. So what I did, I had a dollar sign first in the oh, name, right? No. Good old dollar sign. <laughs> then I had Soul behind it. And then I had R11P. Three R, Riper with one P. That's Riper. Right That's not even Riper. It, it doesn't even make Riper. sense. It doesn't even make sense. So, and that was my um, nickname in Call of Duty for like years, years when I was a teenager. And one day I was like, "That shit doesn't even make sense." <laughs> <Does> <laughs> I'm, sitting here, I'm sitting here in front of my computer and I'm like, "Your name literally doesn't make sense at all." And so, but um, since so many people knew me as Ripper back then, so we cut the soul and then, and that is still my PSN to this day. And every player who ever tried to invite me to a lobby can tell you that this is a struggle. My PSN right now is R1P3RRRR <laughs> underscore. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yes. And, and I was like, I can, and that was even my Twitch name before I basically um, started doing the arena thing because I was like, I cannot read this shit name anymore. <laughs> shit I go live, name. people say, where can I find you on Twitch? And you you sent them a message, R1P3R. You R, lost R, them R. already, bro. You lost them already. So I was like, I had to do something. So we tried to make it a little mm. more short. And I was like, let's just make it Rips. Rips Arena. That is Easy. it. r one p and uh, quick and short, but yeah, the original story behind the name is Soul Reaper. Soul Riper. Soul Riper. Soul yeah. Riper is the original here, <laughs> dude. Oh my! Thank God you grew yeah. up and got rid of that. That's all I'm gonna oh. say. Thank God Gosh, that's yeah, I was over twelve. With. What can I say? Listen, anybody <laughs> that's kept their online names since they were twelve, I got respect for, man. I don't even <laughs> want to know what my online names were when I was twelve, <laughs> dude. That shit is probably so bad. But my last question: You do a lot of online tournaments. Is there a plan? Or a thought of a offline rips arena. Oh yeah, and oh, it is already. Shit. We are already in full full power mode behind the scenes because we actually already know that this is gonna happen next year and oh, probably shit. pretty early next year. Yeah, that means. I don't know when exactly. I even already have a location here in Germany. Oh, it is going to be in Germany. A lot of people shit. know it already. And we try to make something very, very unique. And the fun thing is a lot of people told me, um, do you really want to do an offline event when there's not a new NRS title? And I was like, yeah, uh, you bet your ass I will. And well, uh, so a, a lot of people are already involved Um just to name a few, Aunt Kratos is going to be there. A lot of people are going to be there. It's going to be in Germany. We are going to announce the date soon, probably in the beginning of 2023. Holy shit. And what we try to do, and that is going to be, that is where we are going to need the community in the end. And we need the players as well. I don't know if it's going to work in the end, but we will try. That is the main goal to run an XXL online season for basically 12 weeks. Right now, we run a season for six weeks, and we will try to run an extra large season where people are not going to get paid in the end, Fleshy. <laughs> that is the only worst thing. And everything, everything we can collect during this time period is going to be the prize pool for the offline event. That's how we try to Holy crowdfund God. the offline. And Fleshy, I got to say, I'm 100% sure that the community is going to crush it, Bro. that the players yes. are going to say, you know what, I want to support this. 
And we are gonna put on a freaking show in 2023 with a very, very big prize pool offline. That would be the dream. Dude, I'm fucking in, man. <laughs> I'm, my ass is in Germany for that one. Dude, I was gonna say, if it's early 2023, there's a very good possibility that by that point, depending on what month you pick, the next NRS game could be out. If Have you thought about, like, what if if something were to come out, do you have it? Do you have that be the headlining game, or is it MK11 yes. no matter what? No. If a new game drops, we will definitely prioritize that, and that would be actually even more fun because that's what I'm looking forward to the most. Flashy, the very first season of the new game. No one has an idea what's going on. No best. one knows frame data. It is the best time ever, mm -hmm. and then being able to sit there and say like, you know what, we have a. Uh, Several thousands on the line, right? <laughs> do what you're gonna do. And then players just trying to figure out what the hell is going on. That would be uh, a dream for me. Yeah. And that would definitely be the headline. So if there is a new game next year, early next year, this is gonna be the headliner of the offline. Yeah. Bro, holy shit. I think I said holy shit like 12 times <laughs> since, you, since I started this question. Yo, I cannot wait for that, man. I think you guys are going to fucking kill it. I think you guys are going to throw one of the most insane events for a Mortal Kombat game or whatever. If it's not MK, is it just whatever NRS game is out? Yes. Whatever, whatever it is. Whatever. Dude. Oh, my God, man. I'm in. <laughs> I'm going to see you in Germany in 2023, oh, man. man. Fleshy, I, I'm fucking don't in, excited, But, dude. yeah, that's... It's gonna be it's gonna be great, and I and it, at the same time, of course, it's my first offline event as well, right? Yeah. I've never been to an offline oh, in my wait. entire life, and you no, haven't? No, never. No, never. Wow. You're just gonna you're just <laughs> gonna you're just yeah, gonna I do just it. Do my own. <laughs> I just do. Wait, we don't have offlines in Germany. Let me just do my own. That's that's how we roll. Oh my god. But yeah, we're just. Um, we're just trying to get something because you know it, our main focus or I'm EU based, right? Yeah. That means our main audience, even though additional regions are allowed to compete, we are still sitting in the EU time zone for our events. We are streaming at 7 p.m. our time, super early for the NA peeps, right? That is 1 p.m. Eastern where we go live on Twitch and on YouTube and stuff like that. Um, so our main focus is, of course, the EU scene and that's... Coming back all the way, what we spoke about earlier, um, where we mentioned we try to represent underrepresented regions, you know, there are basically no offline events for EU players at all. If we want to compete offline, Gotta we fly. have to play, you Gotta have to fly. fly and you have to pay thousands. Yep. And I can understand players saying, if the price pool is not even big enough to cover the travel cost, the, the flight alone, that players who have no sponsor or whatsoever are struggling. And that's where we want to step up once again, giving EU players an opportunity to shine and to play for some real big money. Yeah, so that is, that is the main reason behind the location here in Germany. And of course, it's easy for me because... I was going to say, <laughs> you've done enough, man. I think you should keep it close. Keep it close to home. Do you have any plans then to go to any offlines, like over here in North America or anything like that? Or... Nothing I would that. love to. I, I mean, now that you're a full-time next... content creator, man. Definitely. No I mean, as a content creator, Flashy, I, I have to. I mean, yeah, I, mean, I, you I gotta need be to do there. the vlog stuff. Yeah. I need to learn what? the vlog stuff. Are you going to Are you gonna do that? Would oh, 100%. You... Yeah, definitely. Oh. Definitely. I would be down for that. That would be so fun. I see so many people do that. Um, but yeah, 2023, I, I want to, to have that offline feeling because... It is funny when you never experience something yourself and then you listen to the players competing and they're like, man, offline, it, is, it hits different. It, it is a complete different vibe to sit there. You look to your right, you see your opponent sitting there and just playing some MK11 or any fighting game whatsoever. I want to have that feeling as well. Mm -hmm. And you're going to give it to the players of EU. Some, again, yeah. same thing. Some of who... Like, yeah, the top players, maybe they've traveled to, like, EVO and stuff, but those, like, mid-level players that are still nasty at the game, they really never got a chance to do this, and now they're going to get a chance to show it off. And of, I, it shouldn't be anybody else but you to host that event. You know, like, you're the only Thank person so I could think of 
that should host that event. I've kept you for like way over an hour, man. I know that it's like midnight over there, even though you still are going to be up for the next six hours doing your, your matrix stuff <laughs> that you work on on your computer. But rip, man, holy shit. What a freaking conversation, man. Every time I talk to you, dude, I just, I get so like just jacked up and hyped up. And I'm just like, you know what? I just want to work now. Like I just want to grind. I want to work. I want to start pumping out vids. You just you got something, you got a different air about you, man. I, I don't know what it is, but God damn, you're killing it. That's really all I got to say. Thank you so much for saying that. Thank you so much for having me on the show and allowing me to, to talk here a little bit about uh, the project and stuff like that. This literally felt like a 10 minute talk. I was... looked, dude, I looked down and yeah, it said an hour, five minutes. I was like, yo, what the hell? I thought we just started. It's, it's just crazy. And there is so much more we could I talk. Know, we could literally bro. talk for five hours straight. But Fleshy, I appreciate you so much. Thank you for giving me the chance to, to be on your show. And uh, it's, it was great. It Everybody was fun. go sign up for Rips Arena. Go play some MK11 and let this man commentate your matches. It's that easy. His Discord will be in the description. Everything else will be in the description. Rips Twitter has been there. I mean, he tweets literally everything, so all the information is there. Rip, you're the fucking man. We're done here. Appreciate you, brother. Thank you. Thank you so much, Flashy. Have a wonderful, wonderful evening, bro. No, or day for you. I know it's still pretty early, midnight Dude, yeah, here. Yeah, go to sleep, man. Go to sleep, I'm bro. going to sleep.